the one thing that AFC teams were able to hang their hats on, one thing that all AFC teams that wanted to get into the Super Bowl and knock out the defending Super Bowl champs all season long that they could hang their hats on was the fact that the defending Super Bowl champs and the Kansas City Chiefs did not have sole possession of the top seed in the AFC. Well, sadly for every other team in the AFC that hopes to make the Super Bowl this year, that's no longer the case. Because the Kansas City Chiefs are now the one seeds in the AFC with three games to go. They yesterday went to Miami, which did not have their top running back in Miles Gaskin or his two top backups because of injury and the fact that Gaskin had COVID. And the Dolphins did not have Kyle Van Noy in the middle of that defense that, other than Pittsburgh, had given up the fewest points in the NFL going into week 14. Just a hair under 18 points per game. And that defense wound up picking off Patrick Mahomes three times. Three, three, three times. A couple were tip balls. but Understood, but they're still in the ledger as interceptions. They still got the ball away. They got two touchdowns from Mike Gesicki, who is now a stout tight end in the league, but doesn't compare to the tight end that is going to be calling in in 35 minutes. And doesn't compare any receiver in Miami. Can't compare to the Cheetah, who got one on the ground, one in the air. And no matter how Tua can put points on the board, as he was able to do towards the end of that game, and come up with his first career 300-yard passing game, all of those together, if I told you three interceptions of Mahomes and Tua would throw for 300 yards, oh. and they'd score over 20 points, Miami. Nope. And it didn't even feel close either. It didn't. You know what? It was close early on, and you thought, maybe this could happen. You could go high register. Mm. The Dolphins really have a chance here today. No, I mean, look, it just doesn't look. And then all of a sudden, here comes Tyreek Hill around the corner on a run. And then there goes Tyreek Hill up top. And then, you know, the, the, the one play that I saw that I tweeted about, Mahomes is in his own end zone, and he, on his back foot, throws it half the field, and who's running the go route? His tight end. Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Come on now. Come on now. And then the defense is opportunistic in its own right. And unfortunately, again, for the rest of the league, Kansas City is your one seed in the AFC right now. And they have to go to New Orleans next week, which may get Drew Brees back. But that's the last time the Chiefs have to get on a plane for the rest of this season. That's it. With the exception of, well, you know, if they've got to get on one to go to Tampa. Their last two games are at home. And with the clinching of the AFC West, their first playoff game will be at home. For sure. And I have no idea how the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to win more than the Kansas City Chiefs the rest of the year, even with the get-right game that they've got to close out week 15 one week from tonight, it'll be Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. Pittsburgh can't run the ball a lick right now. And the problem for the Steelers is their receivers are dropping passes still. And suddenly, an 11-0 team is now in a bit of dire straits with their first losing streak because the Bills are right behind them. Bills are right behind them. Steelers can also have Cleveland right behind them. And Pittsburgh has to visit Cleveland to end the season. And Cleveland, after tonight, play both New York teams. And the Giants turned into a pumpkin yesterday, thanks to Arizona, which is the aforementioned team that was sniffing it, but now the seventh seed. Josh Allen threw for almost 200 yards in the second half. Figured it out. Figured it out. He didn't throw for 300 yards. And he wasn't on tilt like he was the week before in San Francisco. You could say, in a way, statistically, not so much, but just in a way that Josh Allen followed up 
his best performance as a pro, which is what I thought he did in San Francisco, with an even better one. Even better. Even better one. Because the Steelers had him absolutely staring into a little bit of headlights in the first quarter. Snow's coming down. Empty building. You you know, you got to create your own energy. And the Steelers are sucking the energy out of the building. And took a 7 nothing lead. A big, huge, huge pick six turned things around for the team right before the end of the half. I mean, this the Bills couldn't move the ball worth a lick and still had the lead at halftime. And then whatever adjustments they made coming out, second half, it worked. Boy, did it work. And Allen was just carving up the Steelers. Looked like a total different quarterback, total different offensive group out there. Stephon Diggs, Stephon Diggs being man. the first guy this season to get – 100 catches. Okay, now. I said in the first quarter of the season that I abandoned ship, but now you got to look at him and see this for what it is right now. Could the Buffalo Bills possibly be the best team to knock off the Chiefs? Hold that thought, Rich Eisen. Okay, that sounds like a overreaction Monday. But it is a legitimate question, which kind of gives you an answer as to whether I think that's an overreaction or not. But you look at the rest of the landscape. We'll see how the Browns play tonight. And you could say that, you know, Derrick Henry and the Titans are coming at you. You could say that. Because they were coming at the Chiefs last year and gave them a real good shot in the AFC championship game, but it wasn't enough. And Derrick Henry, by the way, congratulations, Derrick Henry. I have personally taken your numbers just from your games against the Jacksonville Jaguars and placed it in front of the committee of all voters for the Pro Football Hall of Fame, you're in. Congratulations. You don't have to play You don't, don't have to play another game. Just your games against the Jacksonville Jaguars has gotten you into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So let's sit down for the bust, measure your jacket, you're in. Derrick Henry's bust would look so sick with that hair. Too. Well, it's going to because he does play the Jacksonville Jaguars twice a year for the rest of his career because I don't think the Titans are going to let him go anywhere. Unfortunately for Tennessee, they don't play Jacksonville uh, the rest of the year. Sadly. Derrick Henry, dude. So the Titans remain the four seed, and the Bills are the three seed. Kansas City's the one seed. Pittsburgh's the new two seed with that rampaging five seed of Browns taking center stage tonight. Your new six seed are the Indianapolis Colts in the American Football Conference because they just absolutely boat raced the Raiders in the second half of that game. Phillip Rivers is en fuego, to use the phrase of the gent who feeds us his audience every day on Peacock, the Dan Patrick Show. T.Y. Hilton getting more involved, and guess who he has next week, the team that he owns the same way that you could look at the Jacksonville Jaguars masthead and say, I know it says Con for ownership, but I think it really is Henry. The Houston Texans, I know it says McNair is ownership, but T.Y. Hilton has that all wrapped up, and T.Y. is beginning to move, as is that running game, and Phillip Rivers is being protected. He may be hobbling around on that toe that needs some help, but the Raiders are absolutely in dire straits. Can't count anyone out. Can't count anyone out. Three straight wins could give you 10, and that might be enough. Who knows? But that looked terrible. Raiders, without the help of Greg Williams, blitzing the entire New York Jet organization in the direction of Derek Carr one week ago yesterday, certainly helped things out. And how about, by the way, both defensive coordinators that were standing on the sideline for that Raiders-Jets finale eight days ago? Both of them are out. Paul Gunther was fired after the Indianapolis Colts offense just had its way against the Raiders. Rod Marinelli who's, uh, as we know, um, former D.C. in spots like the Dallas Cowboys, Tampa Bay, and all that good stuff, right? Well, I was kiffing back in the day, too. Look, Rod Marinelli is a longtime defensive coordinator in this league. We'll see what he does in the next three weeks. And we'll see what the Ravens do tonight. That's your AFC. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.